so we just finished setting up camp now it is time to go for our first afternoon drive here at Nosop let's aim high and hope for lions and leopards eh? The Nosop River originates in Namibia and follows a southeasterly course passing through the thick porous sands of the semi-arid Western Kalahari Desert. Upon leaving Namibia, it forms the border between Botswana and South Africa and bisects the Kalahari Transfrontier Park. In the southern part of the park, the Nosop River is joined by the intermittently flowing Oyop River. The more we travel to the Nosop area in the Kalahari, the more we are in awe of this beautiful area that the Kalahari has to offer. It is a very harsh environment and yes the roads are very corrugated, but this is what we actually love and we will always return to recharge ourselves in this area. So aiming high paid off, we are here at the sighting of a leopard. The visual isn't fantastic at all but at least we are seeing a leopard. We have noticed that over the past two years there has been a major improvement in leopard sightings in the park. This time this leopard wasn't up to anything, just walking and hiding behind the tall grass. So we aimed high, first we got our leopard ticked off and now we are at a lion sighting. It is very far into the Nosop river bed but hey it's a lion sighting. At first we only saw one female and as we watched them more heads kept popping up from the grass. Eventually the cubs also started showing themselves. They walked towards the road, but unfortunately, as it always is, we had to head back to camp before gate closing time. This is our epic overlanding adventure in the Kalahari. Oh. 
in the previous episode. We had a spectacular game drive from Tuirifiran to Norsop with absolutely fantastic sightings. We finally got to sleep in the Companion and had a fantastic first night under the stars at Norsop Rest Camp in our billion star accommodation for the night. Good morning from Nosop. It's around 6 degrees. It feels much colder though. We are seeing a beautiful sunrise over the Nosop uh, riverbed there in the background. We just made some coffee. Now it is decision time to see if we are going north or south. Yesterday north we saw some leopards and that lions with the cubs. So we are hoping to see them again and then afterwards go south. So we got to the office around quarter to seven and there already was a pretty long queue so we decided to just quickly head over to the hide, had a quick view there, had a coffee. Now Zante is standing in the queue waiting for our permit to go out. It is always worth it to quickly visit the hide in the mornings. We have had some mornings in the past where the sightings that everybody is searching for was right at the Northrop waterhole. So we came across two lions. Seems like one is still a youngster. We can't really see them very well. They are hiding in the grass from us. But we'll stick around and see if they move a bit. Once again, the lines kept popping up from all over and as soon as we got into position to get a photograph, they disappeared again into the tall grass. So we headed further north towards Polenswa in search of some smaller wildlife that did not hide in the grass.
We have been sitting here at Polenso Water Roll for quite a while now. There's a jackal here that normally catches some Namaqua doves and sand grass or any bird. She kept on stalking and trying to get into the right position to catch something, but the birds were just too clever for her on this occasion. We did not get to see her catch anything on this occasion, but on a previous visit we saw her catching 14 birds in just a matter of hours, which is pretty remarkable in our opinion. We never thought that a black backed jackal could provide us with so many hours of entertainment. She caught one after the other, ate it, then she returned for yet another bird. The Polenso water hole is arguably one of the most productive water holes in the north of the park, which also makes it one of the busiest spots up north. We headed back to camp, had an afternoon nap and then we headed south of Nosok for our afternoon game drive. We 
we came across this honey badger foraging for food. They always seem to be on a serious mission of some sort. At least we got a proper pose on one of the concrete markers. If it is honey badger that you want to see in the park, then Maurice Loop is probably one of the best spots to see them. On a previous visit we came across this badger that was also foraging for food. If you have ever wondered what was digging all the holes on the side of the road, well, now you know. The badger was going from one small hole to another, blowing into the hole and then he would suddenly start digging. Unfortunately, the only audio we got was from an iPhone, but at least you can still hear it. There were a few times when his dinner got away but at least he did manage to catch a few. We are sitting here at Maurice Agat, or Maurice Dry, or Maurice. Currently, the sign says Maurice. If anybody perhaps knows why the name keeps changing, please comment below. We are sitting here at the water hole, looking at the moon rising over one of the dunes there in the background. It seems like it's going to be full moon tonight. It would be amazing to sit at Maurice Waterall until it is completely dark, watching the sunset and all the animals that comes to drink. But unfortunately we still have to get back to camp before gate closing time. As the sun is setting, the sky gets filled with the most amazing colours, which makes the drive back to camp not bad at all. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button. And if you would like to see more of this content in the future, please consider subscribing.